All right, today we're going to talk about how you can take the new Betaflight 4.0 Demon and turn it into D-Boost. Okay, so D-Term for me is a love-hate relationship. I love what D-Term does for the PID controller, being able to kind of see what's coming, adjust for it, adapt, cope, things of that nature. Pushes against outside influences, all good stuff. However, the other problem with D-Term is any little bit of noise. I mean, it really magnifies it. High frequency noise, it can magnify it up to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times. Uh, it's actually, I have a video to it, I'll link in my upper right on that and how the D-term magnifies higher frequency noise than lower frequency noise. Uh, it's really interesting how that works. So that's kind of where D-min came into play. Uh, honestly, a, a bunch of the guys were looking at, okay, how can we dynamically have the D-term and we were always talking about D-boost and uh, Chris Thompson, thanks to him, CTZ Snooze, and Joe Lucid for working on this. Uh, they kind of flipped the tables on it and said, well, we can artificially lower D-term and then, you know, have stick movements or prop wash events and it will detect it and move it up. And I thought, close enough, we can just reverse that to get turn that back into D-boost. So in Betaflight 4.0, when you look at D-min, their settings are down at like 20 and 22, I think, for the PID gains. And then the D-min gain is about at 27, I believe it is, for the faults. So I'm going to go on the other side of that. One of the things I recommended in my, my PID tuning tab video where we went through all these settings is raising it up to 35, 40. I've actually have it up to like 45, I might even try 50, to have the D term gains boost even faster during prop wash events. And you can see here what I've done is I've kind of flipped it on its head and said, okay, instead of lowering these, these D minimum gains here, instead of pushing our D gains down for roll and pitch, Let's set those at the defaults, the 30 and 35, which were up here, and then let's try higher D gains up, up at the top. So here are kind of the results, and I know this is a lot of graphs on the screen, so I'll go through it. By the way, this is the PID toolbox, the newest version from Brian White, and this tool is just amazing for taking out subjectivity out of any adjustments you make in your tune. I'll do another video on this because he's made a lot of updates to it. And it's kind of all the same, but it's the interface is a little bit different. So let's just use this and talk about this. So this is a flight A and B. Uh, flight A, I D min turned off, uh, D roll 35, D pitch 38. Down here, what I did is you can narrow the window for whatever data it's going to look at. So I narrowed it down to where I did was doing 180 degree turns on both flights. So this is flight A with D min turned off, and you know 35, 38. Then this is with flight B is D min turned on 35, 38 at the min values with a gain, a D min gain of 45. So I think it can go even higher. That adjusts you know, how rapidly uh, D will raise based on prop wash detection. And then the D max, which is these values here, 50 and 58, you can see that's what I had there. Now this compares PID error. So why are we looking at PID error? So essentially prop wash is really just PID error. Uh, you're not really moving your sticks, but the quad kind of wobbles and you can see it in your footage. Well, that wobble is detected by PID error. PID error is what the PIDs are actually adjusting to. That what's, that's what makes the P-term react. That's what makes the D-term react. Um, so if you just look at Trace Setup 3 on my UAV Tech Black Box Explorer template setup, which I'll make a link down in the video description where you can download that. You just open it up and then you can just hit 3 on your keyboard. That sets up so we can see PID error here on roll, pitch, and then down here as a summary of the pit sums for roll, pitch, and yaw. I don't have yaw up here for pit error, it just was too much for the graphs. But nevertheless, we're kind of looking at this deviation here. So you can see this is the pit error here. This is some prop wash going through here. This is 180 turns, so you can see the pit error goes up and then goes down as we're flying, then do hard 180, raise up throttle, pit error again starts to spike, and you can see the D term reacting to it. So ultimately we want to get to the closest resemblance where this just is a straight line, this pit error line here, the one that's highlighted, it's just kind of straight line through, or those frequencies are not very high in amplitude, 
and their very their oscillations are, are fast. You're gonna have some oscillations there. It's just we're trying to get it so you can't really detect it in the camera or in the HD footage, right? Where it's very high frequency oscillations that the amplitude is not very much. It's basically a shimmer that the camera can't even pick up. So looking back at the output from the PID toolbox, you can see a spectrograph of the PID error here for flight A, that's with DMN off. Here's a spectrograph with flight B with DMN on. You can see the frequency and the amount of, I guess I would call it white or red, is the has to do with the magnitude of the pit error. So you can see there's less magnitude because there's the it's the it's not as light here, it's lighter over here. And then the um, you can see the difference in uh, you know what kind of frequency spectrum it is. Now over here on the right hand side, this is the the mean absolute pit error. And so you can see here this is basically an averaging. The A had more than B. And over here you're looking for these lines to be you know whatever is narrow whatever is a narrower peak is better so you can see the blue which is flight blee is slightly better than a so all around it's better and that's really what's important you know we're not trying to say well how much better you can always keep doing like joshua bardwell will say you know if you're doing something and it's going good we'll do more of it and just keep doing more of that until it stops going good and then kind of back off so this so far this is an improvement i haven't gone even further yet but i'm thinking about even boosting my D gains, my max D gains up to like 65, 68 or 65, 70, you know, so on and so forth to see how, you know, how high that can, that can get. Same thing for the D min gain. So give it a try, you know, flip your D min around to make it a D boost, put in your normal D gains here, put in some higher D gains and some higher gain here, D min gain, which just again, how quickly it raises and see how it works for you. I'm gonna roll now after this some flight footage, some HD flight footage of with the demon off flight and the demon on flight. Flight footage videos at 30 frames per second, whereas these logs were at 2,000 frames per second. So you can see the 2,000 frames per second data shows it, there's an improvement, and then oh, we see the same with the 30 frames per second data as well. Okay, so I wanted to turn off the face cam here and just go through the logs a little bit just to make sure what we're seeing uh, from the flight video and from the PID toolbox, you know, is, are we actually seeing that in the traces, you know, is it all kind of adding up. So on the right hand side here we have Demon turned off, on the left hand side we have Demon turned on with the gains that ramp up to 50-55, they don't actually get that high, they get into the high 40s, uh, just how kind of Demon works. So we kind of browse through here a little bit. And the best way I've found to do this 
because it's it's really a thing on average. You know, you're not turning exactly the same every time. So it's that's where the TID, PID toolbox really comes into play. It allows you to kind of look at the average of everything through a certain section of the flight and get a sense that way. Uh, the other way to average I found is just kind of take a visual, you know, uh, scrub through it. So I'm going to kind of scrub through this. This is that section. And what you're looking at here, this is the pit area on roll and pitch, same thing on this side. And we're looking for the magnitude of the deviation here. So you can see that's we're growing some pit area here and this is a little shimmering of uh, the prop wash. So we're going to kind of scrub through that. You can see uh, we get a little bit more magnitude there. Scrub through it. This is each time we're getting, each time you're seeing that pit air go up, that's another 180 turn. So there's a little bit more magnitude, a bigger one here on pitch. So that had a pretty decent one. A little bit there as well. And that's kind of the end of that one. So let's go through and look at what D min turned off. So a little bit more there. A little bit more there as well. That one was pretty good. A little bit more there. Ah, a lot more there on roll. And then we get this is where I did a uh, split S. So if you're looking to mitigate prop wash, definitely give D boost a try. Thanks again, and I hope this helped.